Your canteen is empty. The coastline stretches for miles. The ocean is right there, mocking you with endless water you cannot drink. This is one of the oldest survival traps in human history, and it has killed sailors, soldiers, and castaways for centuries. Today I'm going to show you a compact desalination method that turns salt water into drinkable fresh water using nothing more than a metal bottle, copper tubing, and fire. This isn't theory. This is a field-tested survival technique that fits into a normal kit and works when modern systems fail. Stay with me, because this knowledge has kept people alive long before plastic filters and electric pumps ever existed. Before we get into it, take a second to support Warfront Survival. Like the video, share it with someone who cares about real-world preparedness, drop a comment with your thoughts or improvements, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future survival history breakdowns. Now, let's get straight into the hard-earned knowledge. Why boiling salt water works, and why history relied on it. Desalination works because salt does not evaporate. When salt water is heated, the water turns into steam, while the salt stays behind. If you capture that steam and cool it back into liquid, what you get is pure fresh water. This principle was known to ancient mariners, medieval alchemists, and naval crews long before electricity. Distillation was used on ships as early as the 1500s, and the concept hasn't changed because it doesn't need to. Fire, metal, and patience are enough. So, why does a compact bottle-based design really matter in survival situations? Well, large desalination setups are, quite frankly, useless if you can't carry them with you. A stainless steel bottle that doubles as a normal canteen. Now that solves this problem rather elegantly. When you're hiking, bugging out, or, you know, operating anywhere near salt water, both weight and space become absolutely crucial. A single wall stainless bottle can actually handle direct flame, which is quite different from those insulated bottles that unfortunately trap heat and eventually fail. And when it's not in use, this setup behaves just like a normal water bottle, which honestly is exactly what makes it so valuable. Here's how the condenser turns deadly steam into safe water. The real magic, if you will, happens in the copper tubing. Steam leaving the bottle must be cooled back into liquid, or else it's simply wasted. Copper is ideal for this job because it transfers heat extremely well. By coiling the tubing around the bottle, you increase the surface area, allowing the steam to cool and condense efficiently. You know, this same principle was used in early moonshine stills, naval distillers, and even battlefield medical sterilizers. Eight or nine tight coils are enough to condense most steam under field conditions. Why soldering matters more than people think. This system lives or dies on airtight connections. Soldering copper to stainless steel is not intuitive and, well, sloppy joints leak pressure and wastewater. The surfaces must be clean, properly fluxed and heated gently. Lead-free plumbing solder is mandatory because this water will be consumed. Historically, poor solder killed people slowly through heavy metal poisoning. Survival isn't just about making water, it's about making safe water. Managing heat so you don't waste fuel or water is, well, absolutely crucial. Boiling harder is not always better, you know. If steam escapes the tubing, you are losing fresh water, plain and simple. 
The goal here is steady boiling with complete condensation. Windshields, stable fires, and proper suspension of the bottle all matter quite a bit. When possible, cooling the coil with wet fabric or dipping part of it into water dramatically increases efficiency. This trick actually mirrors how naval distillers use seawater baths to cool condensers centuries ago. Why distilled water needs minerals to keep you alive is a rather important point. Pure distilled water strips electrolytes from your body if consumed long term. This is a problem, but honestly an easy one to solve. Adding a few drops of the concentrated brine left behind restores essential minerals without reintroducing dangerous salt levels. You know, this practice actually mirrors how sailors back in the day would mix distilled water with rationed mineral sources in order to avoid weakness and cramps on those long voyages. It's all about avoiding that silent failure that, well, ruins your equipment. Never boil the bottle completely dry. When the water is gone, the salt hardens into a mineral cake that's really difficult to remove and honestly can damage the bottle. Early distillers were well aware of this, and so they stopped their stills early for the very same reason. Survival gear, after all, must be reusable, not just sacrificed after one use. So, you know, fire isn't your only option when it comes to heating things up out here. This system works with fire, sure, but it also works surprisingly well with focused solar heat. If you paint the bottle black, it'll absorb sunlight much more efficiently, especially under a Fresnel lens or a parabolic reflector. Now, it's a slower process, but it doesn't use any fuel at all, which makes it just brilliant for long-term survival along the coast. Many lifeboat desalination methods today still rely on solar distillation because, well, it simply cannot break down or run out of power. Why does this knowledge still matter today? Modern gear fails, batteries die, filters clog, desalination tablets run out. But, you know, Fire, metal, and physics do not stop working. This compact desalination method is not some sort of gimmick. It is actually a distilled form of centuries-old survival engineering that remains relevant in any collapse, expedition, or emergency near salt water. If this guide gave you something solid, you can actually use. Support Warfront Survival by subscribing, sharing this video with someone who values real preparedness, and leaving a comment with your ideas or experiences. This channel exists to preserve the hard lessons of history before they're forgotten again.